What's good, Internet? My name is Attack Slug, and welcome to a review of Feudal Alloy, launching on the PC and the Nintendo Switch January 17th for a price of $16.99. As always, full disclosure, this copy of the game provided by the publisher. Feudal Alloy opens with a brief cutscene where we are introduced to the hero of this tale, Atsu. A humble goldfish in a robot suit that spends his time taking care of the elderly. Suddenly, a gang of bandits pillages your oil supplies, and you head off into the dangerous woods to reclaim your valuables. And at the conclusion of this opening setup, that's basically all the story you're gonna get. So if you are wondering why all these robots are piloted by tiny fish, don't expect an answer to that particular mystery. But what it does do is give you an 8 to 10 hour melee based metroidvania romp through a hand drawn medieval world. And it's this unique art style and presentation that really makes the game stand out. Outside of the endearing artwork, I found the controls to be tight and responsive. Anytime I missed a jump, it always felt like it was my fault and not the game's. And while combat is largely sword-based, you do get some fireball-style attacks later on in the game. The way Feudal Alloy gates your progress is not only through your abilities, but also through data cartridges that serve as keys for giant metal doors throughout the world. Otherwise, it's a very familiar formula if you've played a game in this genre before. When you take into consideration the style of this game, one key component that merits discussion is the map. When I originally wrote this review last week, this map was inadequate for a variety of reasons. The top of those being a lack of any indication of the doors that you found. Thankfully, this glaring omission has been patched before launch. And the map now shows the pertinent information for most of your backtracking needs. However, as I write this on the day before launch, there is still no overall completion percentage. Additionally, the map only shows what room you are in, but does not display the exact location in that room. Given how large some of these rooms can get, this also seems like a weird oversight. Enemies can be another issue, especially early on, where the two patterns you will see the most are either stationary or homing. And some attacks are not always telegraphed clearly, and you also take damage if they touch you. This would be less of an issue, if not for the fact that if you want to use healing or cooling, your character is at a complete stop in order to play the animation. This makes using those crucial items in combat situations extremely difficult. Once you've unlocked more abilities like dash, block, and stun, the combat does open up and become more varied. But it's the early hours that can be a discouraging grind while your moveset is still limited and most of the enemies are charging directly at you. Outside of your abilities, you also have a large variety of gear you can equip. In practice, this means you can spec at you more towards the style you want to play. However, the problem you're going to run into here is that there is no way to sort this gear in your inventory, and it can't be sold back to the shops. So your options are to either keep it or drop it. Additionally, there is no easy way to compare new items to the ones you already have equipped. Defeating the enemies will also grant you experience, and for every level you gain, you get to unlock a new perk. There are three separate trees for perks, which means you can either specialize or grind out a little bit of everything. And because the enemies do respawn when you leave the room, if you are the type who wants to unlock everything, the option is there. It's important to note here that when you die, you keep all of the money and experience you got since the last save point. But the trade-off there is any items you spent are gone for good. This is only really an issue in a few spots where I had to seriously backtrack to a shop to get some more items to heal to finish a combat room. Speaking of which, there aren't that many proper giant boss fights in the game. There are two, to be exact. Every other scenario that you walk into and think it might be a boss room ends up being waves of enemies in a combat room. And to be fair, some of these combinations can get quite clever. However, given the unique art direction, I felt it certainly could have used some more crazy boss encounters. The music, while period appropriate, is also super repetitive, and I think the culprit here is that largely they're all in the same time signature. And that's meant to help blend the transition in between the areas. But in practice, they all sound so similar, I felt like it was the same song on loop for hours on end. The game does do a fine job, though, of putting hidden areas all over the place. Though again, with the map being what it is, and not having a completion percentage, I was not exactly inspired to keep hunting these extra rooms down. You can totally find some sweet gear, but outside of the names, the gear is mostly going to have the same stats 
as what you can buy in the shops. In my 10 hours of gameplay, I only encountered one glitch, and it was on the last boss. I fell through the floor a couple of times and had to reset. Hopefully that gets fixed before launch, but otherwise the gameplay loop seemed pretty polished. Once you do finish the game, you can load back that last checkpoint and go get anything you might have missed. But since there isn't any kind of new game plus, it's the kind of thing you're only going to play through once. All of that leads to the most important question, who should buy this game? Given the ridiculous number of high quality Metroidvania style games that have released in the last year and a half, by comparison, Beautiful Alloy falls a bit short. The unique presentation and solid gameplay does go a long way, but a handful of core issues means it falls a bit short of being spectacular. But if you just can't get enough of this style of game, and you're hungry for more, Feudal Alloy should certainly scratch that itch. Feudal Alloy is available on the PC and the Nintendo Switch, and Attack Slug gives it a 7 out of 10.